Senate is about Nigeria and Nigerians. Senate debates bill to repeal student loan scheme. Senate seeks health insurance cover for patients with kidney disease. As Senate starts investigation into ways and means loan, Senate President Task Committee on Patriotism. Welcome to another episode of the program Inside the Senate, where we bring you details of happenings in the Senate wing of the National Assembly. I am your regular anchor, Aisha Mohammed Ahmed. In the week under review, the Senate debated a bill to repeal the student loan scheme and replace it with a broader framework that addresses access to loans for a wider scale of Nigerian students. The Senate also had cause to settle a matter that breached its privileges and which had to do with the alleged pardon of the 2024 budget as passed by the National Assembly. Report of these precedents alongside other legislative business in the Senate wing of the National Assembly make up this episode of the program. Please stay tuned. Promote the unity, happiness and prosperity of Nigeria. The Defense Industries Corporation of Nigeria Act Repeal and Reenactment Bill 2023. Amendments Act should be supported by all. There are issues that we must use this opportunity to critically address. We accord this motion the urgency and the necessity it requires. I rise the second motion. The eyes are it. Thanks for staying tuned. The Senate on Tuesday had cause to settle a matter of a breach of privileges brought before it by Senator Solomon Olami Leka. Senator Olami Leka who is the chairman of the Senate Committee on Appropriation, explained that Senator Abdul Ningi, representing Bauchi Central, had granted an interview to the BBC House of Service, where he alleged that the 2024 budget being implemented by the executive arm of government is 28.77 trillion naira, as against what was passed by the National Assembly, which is to the tune of 25 trillion naira, alluding to budget padding by the National assembly it was said that there was a budget of 28 trillion but what was passed was 25 trillion so there is a three trillion on top where are they where is it going so we need to know this there are a lot of things we are coming up with a report and we will show the president himself and ask him if he's aware or not Senator Olami Lekan decried the impression made by the allegations to the effect that the budget was against the North, describing it as false and divisive, urging the Senate to take steps to correct these false impressions. The allegations were taken as a matter of urgent public importance because of its overriding importance. It was then open for deliberations. The statement by Distinguished Senator Ningi Abdul, PDP Baoshi Central, the chairman of the Northern Senators Forum, in some sections of the media, that the 2024 budget was padded to the tune of three trillion, and that the executive was implementing a different budget from what was passed by the National Assembly, is not only very presumptuous, it is scandalous, and an attempt to incite the public against the National Assembly and the federal government. I think it's only fair for us to give him time or to give him chance to defend himself before this August body. <laughs> Mr. President, for the onset, let me concur to about 80% of the translation read out by Senator Yai. I think they have done a fair job, except on some issues that they could not understand. First, 
I have never said somebody was blinded. Secondly, I have never said the budget was funded. Distinguished colleagues, may I just inform you that Distinguished Senator Ningi and Distinguished Senator Ismail Akawu requested a meeting with me and not in senators that they were going to meet with me and 38 others. And at, the, the, at that meeting, I may have to report to you that even Senator Tambua was there, Senator, Senator uh, uh, Sani Musa was there, and a lot of other senators, including Senator Bamuru, and many other northern senators were there. And he told me that he had paid a consultant 30 million to unbundle the budget. And he also made some of the allusions here that, we are, that what was passed by the National Assembly was 25 million, 25 trillion. But what is being operated by the presidency was 28 trillion. And when he told me that, I said, I would like to see the details. In fact, he said, like he said, he said, so some things are repeated in the budget and that the calculation his consultants have come up with was 25 trillion. And therefore, 3.7 trillion was hanging. The same senator Lero, you missed that meeting, but many of the senators were there in that meeting. I now, he now gave me a diagram trying to give percentages allotted to regions. And in the course of it, we, I discovered that uh, while the Southeast, at least I'm talking of Southeast now, had about 3.9%, uh, the South South had 2.2%. The South South is where the Senate President comes from. So I was surprised. So I, told, I, I called his attention, and I requested to have the full details. And he promised me that he was going to make the full details available. And I told him that when the full details are made available, in fact, Senator Dume was also there. He spoke that when the full details of his findings, you are, you are there, you, you, you even, Senator, Senator Ndume was not only there, but he also spoke. I said, when the full details are made available, that I definitely will also get a consultant to study it, and I will call us to meet again. Like you said, Abdul Ningi is one of the most respected senators here. And uh, we had the course, Paroke, as said by uh, speakers you know, who spoke before me that he approached us about his observations within the budget. And a meeting was held, for the purpose of emphasis, it was held in your guest house, together with uh, the likes of uh, St. Olalon, St. Osana Musa, and the rest. And we all agreed, we all agreed that look, yes, we are all humans. Assuming, but not agreeing that there were mistakes. If you have anything, bring that forward. Bring that forward. When you bring them forward, we will now sit down in a tripartite fashion. Because the budget process is an inclusive process, including the Senate, the House of Reps, and the Executive. We then call the House side. Call the executive side. Let's sit down. This is the observation we've seen. And how do we correct them? If at all, there are genuine observations. And I told him, look, we've had this kind of uh, situation before. I told Sadi Musa bin, uh, where he was in the 8th Senate, we had a similar situation, 9th Senate. Someone brought up certain things that felt we were not okay. We look at that. And then later, we found out uh, there was nothing. And then we said, look, we even have uh, a clause in the operation art, the correlation clause that can be used to correct human errors, if any. 
that okay let's keep this something until we are able to have these uh, observations made it is not about ningi now only yes. if we are talking about ningi in this room but it is about all of us outside this thing has happened <coughs> it has happened and ningi was wrong it was wrong in the first instance if you all remember this thing reared its head before when after presentation of the budget there were allegations from the north that it was skewed in favor of the south and a figure was even posted on our platform the northern senators forum by wadada and i spoke to him this morning the total capital in there was 8.9 <coughs> or thereabout but the total of the said skewedness total 52 15 trillion and i told them from the word go this is is wrong so it died down following the extensive deliberations on the matter the senate arrived at the following resolutions that the senate to suspend senator abdul nungi for three months and he should forfeit his entitlement and be disallowed from the precinct of the national assembly complex during the period of the suspension take further necessary steps to correct the wrong impression in the public domain about the 2024 budget created by the BBC interview and other national media houses and social media platforms by Senator Abdul Ningi and amplified by Senator Suleiman Kau through his Facebook account and other social media platforms. Take any further decisions as the Senate deems fit and proper to safeguard the integrity of the 2024 budget, which is pivotal to the revamping of the nation's economy. These, amongst other resolutions, were approved and adopted by the Senate. We'll take a break here to open the Senate's notebook. Don't go away. Bill referral is the forwarding of a draft bill to a committee under which purview its patter falls. This is so that the committee can carry out more legislative action on it. Irrespective of who or where the bill originates from, such actions are taken after the second reading of the bill. The committee is given a period within which to work on the bill and report its findings to the Senate. Welcome back. Still on activities from last week's plenary, the Senate received the Minister of the FCT, the FCT Police Commissioner, as well as heads of other security bodies in charge of the FCT. This was in line with a resolution adopted in the previous week over the escalating kidnappings in the FCT. The Senate also considered other motions and bills in the course of the week, details of which we have compiled in this next report presented to you from our studio. Do keep watching. To invite the Minister of Federal Capital Territory, on Wednesday, 13th March 2024, the Senate Deputy Leader sought the leave of the Senate to admit the Minister of the FCT, Nyesom Wike, and the Police Commissioner in charge of the FCT, Bennett Iwe, alongside his entourage into the Senate for a security briefing. Mr. President, distinguished colleague, you will recall that the first Senate resolved to invite the Minister of Federal Capital Territory and the Commissioner of Police on the modalities put in place to secure residents of Federal Capital Territory. The briefing was, however, held behind closed doors for security reasons. <laughs> Moving on to motions, the Senate received notice of the passing away of a former senator, Abubakar Danso Sodengi, who represented Nasarawa West in the Senate from 1999 to 2011. A motion to that effect was brought to the floor by Senator Ahmed Ali Wadada. Senators used the opportunity to pay tributes to the former senator 
describing him as one who left indelible marks. Lacked the student loans access to higher education bill 2020. On bills, the Senate debated two bills at second reading in the week under review. The first was an executive bill for an act to repeal the student loan access to higher education act 2023 and enact the Nigerian Educational Loan Fund as a corporate body to receive, manage and invest funds to provide loans to Nigerians for higher education, vocational training and skills acquisition and for related matters. Senate leader Michael Bamidele of PME led the debate and was supported by several other senators. Mr. President and distinguished colleagues, the bill seeks to enhance the implementation of the Higher Education Loan Scheme by addressing challenges relating to the management structure of the Nigerian Education Loan Fund, applicant eligibility requirements, loan purpose, funding sources and disbursement. This is a very novel thing to do in Nigeria. It is done everywhere across the world, America and the UK. Students get access to loans to fund their education and research. And when they graduate, they start paying back when they are employed. If we do that in Nigeria and run it efficiently, we will be contributing towards enhancing the skills and educational and human development of our young generation. With this being where we are sure that no matter how underprivileged you are, no matter how poor you are, you can access funds to allow you to get the best education you have. Therefore, we would imagine that going forward, our institutions can be able to have enough funding to be able to compete globally. The bill was read a second time and referred to a relevant committee for further work. The Senate also took the second reading of a bill for an act to provide for the Federal Capital Territory Appropriation and for other matters connected there with 2024. It was also brought up for consideration by the Senate leader, Michael Bamidele of PME. Several other bills were considered for first reading. Money Laundering Prevention and Prohibition Act Amendment Bill 2024 and Nigerian Insurance Reform Bill 2024, sponsored by Senator Adetokumbo Mukayo. You're still watching Inside the Senate, a program that brings you reports of activities from the Red Chamber of the National Assembly. Moving to committee activities, Senate President Gotswil Pabio inaugurated a 17-member ad hoc committee of the Senate to probe the Ways and Means, which was released as loans under the Central Bank of Nigeria, CBN, during the previous administration of former President Muhammadu Buhari. Present at the event were the Deputy President of the Senate, Baro Jibrin, other leaders of the Senate, Finance Minister Wale Edun, Minister of Budget and National Planning Atiku Bagudu, CBN Governor Yemi Kadoso, among others. In his remark, Senate President Akpabio gave a highlight of what prompted the Senate to investigate the ways and means loans of the last administration. Brief history of it has to do with the fact that in the ninth Senate, a total sum of about 23.5 trillion was brought before the Senate for the Senate to is it concur or approve. And the same thing was also presented to the House of Representatives. But the nine Senate, some of the members I see here, did so with a caveat. And the caveat was that the details of the ways and means should be provided. 
According to the Senate president, the Ninth Senate gave its approval with a condition that the details of the ways and means should be provided, but that never happened. Of course, it turned out that it wasn't just 23.5 trillion, that in reality we had reached about 27, almost 28 trillion. And then with interest, by the time the 10th Senate came, we are now saddled with the responsibility of uh, looking at about seven trillion. So when you look at the totality, we are talking about, uh, about the total of about 30 trillion. Of course, even in the 10th Senate, we said, well, let's follow suit and await the details. So having for the details for a long time, and the Accountant General and the CBN Governor have failed to provide the details. The Senate took a, a major motion and then decided to set up an hard work committee to look into these ways and means and particularly look at how the expenses were done. Senator Akpavio stated that the Senate believes the totality of the ways and means has contributed to the current economic downturn the country is facing. The committee, which has been given six weeks to carry out the assignment, was constituted sequel to a report by the Joint Committee on Banking, Insurance and Other Financial Institutions, Finance, National Planning, Agriculture and Appropriations after interacting with the Federal government's economic team a few weeks ago. Senator Akpavio implored members of the committee to approach their responsibilities with the utmost sense of patriotism, professionalism and integrity. He further enjoined the lawmakers to maintain open lines with the Nigerian public as they go about the discharge of their duties. Chairman of the committee, Senator Issa Jibreen, on behalf of the committee, pledged their commitment to the assignment. I want to assure you that we are going to carry out this assignment expeditiously, but without any form of compromise. We are going to carry out this assignment expeditiously without any form of compromise. That I am assuring you. Up next is our profile segment. Stay tuned as we present to you our Senator of the Week. Senator Harun Amanu is the current Senator representing Taraba Central Senatorial District in the 10th Senate. He was born on 23rd of August 1973 in Mutumbiu, Gaso Local Government Area of Taraba State. He holds a bachelor's degree in business administration with specialization in finance from the prestigious Amadubello University in Zaria, Kaduna State. He also holds a master's degree in electronic commerce from Carnegie Mellon University in the United States of America. Senator Manu is also a certified Microsoft system engineer. He has worked with the Nigeria Liquefied Natural Gas NLNG and MTN Nigeria Communication Limited before finally settling down to pioneer many startup firms. Senator Harun Amanu joined the People's Democratic Party in late 2010 and won the primary ticket for the Bali Gaso Federal Constituency seat of the National Assembly from 2011 to 2015. During that period, he served as the Deputy Chairman, House Committee on Banking and Currency, and a member of various committees of the House of Representatives. His commendable performance in the House of Representatives led him to be chosen as the running mate to Darius Dixon Ishaku on the platform of the People's Democratic Party in 2015 general elections where they emerged winners of the election. He then served as the Taraba State Deputy Governor from 2015 to 2023. He was inaugurated into the 10th Senate on 13th of June 2023. His legislative interests lie in the areas of youth empowerment, education and security. On that note, 
We end this edition of Inside the Senate. Do follow us on YouTube and Facebook for more updates on activities of the Red Chamber and its members. And don't forget to send in questions, comments and observations for your distinguished lawmakers in the Red Chamber and we will do our best to get answers to your questions. Thanks for watching and see you next week.